Next up, 3ds Max, and um, all I've done there is reset if you have anything open. And uh, so I'll check the units as well, but it probably has been done previously under Customize if you go to Unit Setup. Uh, check the, the System Unit Setup, and um, I'm going to leave it on inches. If it's on feet, uh, don't worry too much, but uh, again, it's fine if you leave it on inches. But the main thing there is the display unit on millimetres. So I'm just going to uh, click OK, and then I'm going to start with a, um, with a box, and I'm just going to draw that really roughly in the perspective viewport, and then, uh, so I've clicked two points uh, on the ground to make a rectangle, and I'm lifting the cursor, and I'm going to click a third point to set a height. Which you can see then in the parameters on the right, uh, will come up on the create panel. So you can stretch with the spinners, change the size, and that's probably the easiest way to uh, interactively adjust these things when they're primitives. Later on you can definitely stretch it on the screen, but uh, using these spinners works pretty well, and you can of course type in a size there if you want something precise. So I'll just make that into a round number, so 700 by 600 by, oh no, it's left, sorry, 400 by 300 high. And also then just uh, bring that spinner down. You can use the hand there, you'll see is easier than the scroll bar, which you have over to the side, but uh, make sure you realise you can use the hand there to bring those panels up and down when they're big. Mm -hmm. And you've got the segments below, which you can use to add or remove segments which is good if you're going to add detail later on but for now I'm going to leave it just with one segment in each direction and then I'm going to straight away uh, convert that into something else so when you right click you can go to convert to editable poly and you'll see in the modify panel now uh, I might just undo that so you can see in the create panel I've lost the properties, but on the second tab there, which is your modify panel, uh, it's going to show them to me. So I've got the same properties I had when it was a box, because I didn't undo. But now if I again convert to Editable Poly, you can see we have these different properties. And if I click on the plus, you can see the same sub-objects there, which are, you know, vertex. So that's right. As far as Max is concerned, exactly, yeah, it's an Editable Poly. Uh, so it's a collection of polygons, and Max doesn't know that it has a size as a box anymore. Um, but you can still adjust it, of course, uh, in a similar way. So uh, if I go to Vertex there, uh, you can do this either using the hierarchy at the top or the buttons down below. Uh, there are other ways as well. And uh, when you select, then you'll get the individ uh, individual uh, vertices. Uh, I can't do anything with them at the moment because I'm just in select mode. But if I go to select and move, you'll get the gizmo that you might be used to from Revit uh, mapping, and you can use that to adjust those points individually. So I can move any of those separately in any direction. But I'm going to go to edge, and then I can select, obviously, any of those different edges, which are the... Um, I suppose the edges between each of the surfaces and then I'll skip uh, border for now and then go to polygon and you can see again selecting again each of those spaces and element then will select the whole object. So with uh, again with edge I'm going to select uh, using control all the edges on the top and I'll just show you a little shortcut actually with that you can try using these different options like ring and loop, which will give you extra uh, selections. Actually with a single segment box it's not going to help too much, but it's worth just looking at those. You can also try growing and uh, shrinking the selection. So different selection options there, but uh, also you've got the standard uh, selection options like you do in uh, AutoCAD. So control and uh, shift, uh, oh sorry, alt uh, to deselect. And then with the um, crossing and window options, you can select with those. So I'll just uh, go over the corner there, and you can see it's not selecting anything in window mode. If I uh, change to crossing, 
now going over that corner it'll get all those three edges that join at that corner. So I'm going to uh, again just uh, use Alt to deselect the one at the bottom and then Control to add the other two at the top. And now going down to um, the uh, panel below, I might just expand that actually. And so then you can see we've got uh, a few more uh, different options there. Uh, I'm going to look at a few just not, uh, simple things like chamfer. And uh, so, well, first I'll just click on the button, and you can use that to bevel the edges. But if instead you go to the panel, or sorry, the uh, settings button next to it, it'll give you the different options. And so there you can do the same thing using the spinner to set the distance. But then also I can uh, increase the segments to get a rounded edge. So that's how you do your basic rounding with, uh, with polygons. And so you can decide on the detail. It's going to depend how close you view the objects, but it gives you a lot of control over the amount of geometry in your, uh, in your models. So I might just go back and uh, sorry, get that back to no chamfer. Sorry. And uh, and so notice it keeps the chamfer setting uh, even as I undo the um, undo the selection. And I'll just uh, sorry cancel out of that. And I'm going to select the ones on the let's see get all the ones on the top and the ones on the side as well. There yeah. And should I be on the bottom? No, I'll just leave them for now. Uh, so I'll share it for the that selection again. So let's get a bit of rounding. Uh, so notice I've still got a flat surface on the top there. So now I can I just turn this stop freezing. Tick finish, and I'm going to go to polygon. And then I can, if I want to, go to, um, sorry, looking for inset here. Uh, so under this uh, insert vertex panel, you've got all these different uh, tools, which are similar to some AutoCAD um, tools you've got, like offset. Uh, so you have out outline as well for that. So bring this in, using, sorry, going back a couple of steps. Uh, using outline, I can bring the um, edge of that surface in, just like offset. And with inset, sorry, select in a similar way. Uh, outline works with the um, uh, with the surface, and inset works from the uh, from the edge, essentially. So. You can here you've got the um, it's like an offset distance from that edge that goes around that selection. Whereas with inset, sorry. Oh, so this is just flat at the moment. So, yeah. So with this one, you've got the option of doing it by individual faces. So when you've got multiple selections, especially, you can have. Um, or even, yeah, when you've got lots of different surfaces selected, you might have two faces next to each other and they can have um, different insets and be offset separately, essentially. Yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so they are similar, but uh, being inset just gives you those extra options. Uh, if you want to go down or give a height at the same time, you've got uh, bevel, essentially uh, combines um, outline and, uh, and extrude, so with bevel, to get a height and a distance. So it's doing that with the button. You can go in and uh, down. And that's actually what I was going to do next anyway to get the um, basic form of the basin. So then with um, smooth, I can maybe bring that down a bit further. And then going back to the uh, edge at the bottom, might just use the um, window selection to get all of those. I'm just going to use a toggle here, F3, when it works, 
I think because I'm recording, uh, my shortcuts aren't working. So I'm just going to get it up here by right-clicking on the um, option there for shaded. You can change to uh, wireframe. And then I'm just going to use uh, window selection there to get all those edges on the bottom. And then a simple thing I could do there uh, is uh, scale to make that smaller. So with the um, select and uniform scale that you've got next to move and rotate, um, I'm just going to make sure I go to the inside um, between the X and the Y axis or, yeah, that'll work. Okay, I'm just going to bring that all in. Uh, and uh, might work better in shaded mode now that I've selected those. And I could always bring that up as well. So that could give you a basic form. Uh, it made it a bit difficult to work with the um, surfaces if they were having them rounded um, before I started insetting. But uh, if you're doing a simple form, uh, that would definitely be uh, a good idea to uh, round things and then uh, extrude from there. But uh, maybe just give you some other ideas. I'll do another one. So again, going to uh, convert this straight to an editable poly. And notice I didn't even worry too much about the size because I can always adjust it now in any of these different modes uh, just by moving the edges and the vertices as groups. So I can get the basic form that I want. And you can still get an idea of the size down on the um, status bar. And it'll also show you uh, how much you're moving as long as you don't change the uh, mode there to absolute. So then uh, with that basic form, maybe I'll go to Polygon again and use uh, Outline and just bring that inside uh, surface in. Oh, sorry, we've got to use, uh, sorry, Inset first, sorry to bring that in. And then Outline, yeah, sorry, I wasn't thinking before. Outline is going to move the edges. So. You can see um, when I did it with no uh, extra edge that uh, outline moved those edges um, instead of uh, creating a parallel copy. And then uh, with uh, the edge again, I can use the uh, top one just to move that down and create just a different shape there before I then maybe uh, well, I'll just uh, show you extrude first. I might end up uh, beveling this one. Sorry, so back to polygon. And then with uh, extrude, we could give that a depth. Could bring it down. But if I know, well, sorry, I'll just show you extrude again. Uh, I could then again scale that to make it smaller. And that would, that would definitely work. But another option would be just to bevel that. So bevel, again, works like extrude and outline combined. And maybe I've brought that in too much anyway. Oh, hardly. Uh, I can always scale it up afterwards. Right, so I've been doing everything in perspective view so far, but down in the bottom right corner, I'm going to switch to the minimize maximize toggle to see the other views. Let's drag this back. So then looking in the top view, you can get a better idea of these objects. And you can just right click in the different viewports so that you can zoom and pan uh, in the different views without changing your selection. And then now to get back to select my other object, uh, I've got to go out of sub object mode. So I've been at the moment in uh, well, polygon sub-object mode. If I go to the top of the list there, or when you've got one of those buttons active, just click on the one you want to deactivate, and that'll take you to the top of the hierarchy. So you've got the whole object selected, and you can select again other things in your scene. Right, so notice this one is uh, floating above the ground. I can move it. I've just right-clicked to get the uh, menu there. But you can always choose it at the top. I've moved it down using the Y axis there. 
But a better way maybe would be to go to one of these sub-object modes, choose everything and move all of those sub-objects back to the top and notice the gizmo there is still at the bottom on the ground. So just think about the, uh, the original point you've used to create the object, it does still uh, get stored. And, uh, and so finally I just want to show you um, how then to do a plug hole in these. So, oh and also maybe just do, I'll do some quick rounding on this one to uh, make that look more like porcelain. So back to edge. I want to round all these edges fairly evenly now, so I'm just going to select everything, but then I'm going to deselect all of these uh, extra edges. I'll show you later how you can remove those, but for now uh, this will be okay if I just deselect them. And using uh, chamfer, I'm going to click on the settings button to get the panel and then taking that down to a fairly low value. I just want it to be about one or two mil. So let's go in the middle, 1.5. Yep, and then I want a few segments in here. Okay, you can still zoom and have a look at it while you're doing this and just see how it looks. So, not doing a great job actually. Oh, see here I don't have the uh, the corner there rounded properly. So maybe I'm going too high. Let's see. No, this does happen in Max quite a bit. You will get issues when you try to do things like this. I'm going to close that and I'm going to remove these edges because of those joints there. So I'm going to select those four edges and then using remove. It's taken out all except one, and that's uh, standard with Max. So then going to, let's see, the top, round it in a different order. Uh, so we'll get this, yeah, we'll do the corners first actually. Okay, it's just freezing on me. Okay, so again with chamfer. Oh, with chamfer. Yeah. Oh, so you've got to click on the settings button next to it. And uh, so I'm just going to keep an eye on this one. Actually, the uh, the edge there is really going to cause a problem. But let's just see if we do these fronts first and yeah it's got an issue there so let's do it in a different way it's a bit of a problematic program sometimes when you get these uh, leftover edges like this so there's a way to fix it back to polygon delete that whole surface and then go to border and you can uh, select those uh, open edges and you can use those to create uh, a cap, which will, with any luck, fill in the uh, area it has. And now I'm going to go back to Polygon to delete the extra one. It's being really painful, so let's see if we can so go back a few steps, try a different way. So I'm just going to go back to delete Polygon, so there we are. And maybe we'll, yeah, 2015, they've uh, fixed up the uh, chamfering issue, so I don't want to go too far with that. Maybe we'll just live with the fact that it's going to give us a funny edge there. So back to edge, and then again using, um, just using chamfer there. Probably being too fussy, but it is something to think about that, uh, that funny edge, and uh, so let's just get it to fewer than that. 
Honestly, as long as it's okay on this side, I'll show you a trick afterwards that will fix it. And back to the uh, top, I'll just round those edges. So it's just not orbiting. There we go. Ah, sorry, can't have that one selected. Ah, or these. So just got to watch out for that. So I've got these funny little edges here. Oh look, I'm going to fix this before I go too far. So the trick I was going to show you to fix this. If you get issues like that, it's fine on this side. So, because it's a symmetrical object, uh, what I can do is, and uh, and you'll see then why um, why we've got this issue at the corner in the first place. Uh, I'm going to go in and put this modifier on called symmetry, and then going to the sub object of symmetry, you've got mirror, and we'll uh, again just find that mirror plane. There it is. So just orbiting, you can see there's this yellow plane. And I'm going to uh, go to rotate, bring that around uh, with angle snap turned on, and bring that around, so using the, yeah, don't use the outer grey circle. Okay, so using the, um, the base there, which it should give me, but I'm going to maybe change to a different viewport to get it. There it is. No, that's the wrong one. So I'm trying to get the yellow circle there. That's it. Okay, so I'll sort of bring that around uh, uh, 90 degrees, which you can see down uh, on the status bar here. And so now that's made it symmetrical, but uh, not in the direction I want. So I'm going to flip that. And it's now flipped the, the side that's working over to the other side. And more importantly, it's put the seam down the middle. So it needs a seam. And uh, so having the seam automatically generated on the corner there was causing a real problem in the way this was being modelled. But getting the seam to go down the middle uh, will fix it. And I shouldn't have had to go through that at this point with simple modelling, but it is something you do come across, unfortunately, with Max quite a bit. Uh, so now I'm simply going to convert that to an editable poly again, and I'm back in business. So now it's, uh, again, the same kind of object it was before. So back to the uh, edges there, we'll go and move those over to make this a bit smaller. And then with the uh, edge loop on the, uh, on the top there, so it should be able to do a loop around the top, but uh, if it doesn't make it all the way, you can always just keep selecting with control. And uh, so again, I can uh, do my rounding now. And that's going to be important with this sort of uh, geometry or the uh, object you're trying to create, which is generally going to be porcelain. Uh, it's going to be important to get that, that rounding. So again, you can see that's working a lot better now. And, uh, well, I should also try and round these corners first, maybe, to get some uh, roundness on the top of that surface there. So just using control here to select those edges and uh, again with chamfer and bring that in. Okay, so you can see it's trying to do a rounded edge there and uh, it's doing probably a good enough job but uh, again you have to see what happens when you round the next one. So don't get too fussy with the rounding, but it does work pretty well. And then when you look at this in shaded mode, you can see it's going to show you uh, pretty good detail when you render. Uh, so then, oh yeah, so just to finish those off, again, the plug holes. Uh, I'm going to change it to um, show edges as well. So just right-clicking on that shaded button, uh, I'm just going to go to edge faces. Just makes it a bit easier to see uh, those objects. And I might change their colour as well. So when you select them, you can go to the, um, in the modify panel, the color selector next to the name, and then just choose a color from the list there. So it's a bit easier to see. 
And then again, to put plug holes in, uh, you can add more primitives. So I'm just going to do a cylinder. And I'm going to turn this option on auto grid. And then just click and drag over the top of the uh, surface there. And you can see it's made it on that plane. So it picked it up automatically. And I'm going to take it up. And then I'm going to right click to finish. I'm going to use the z-axis to bring it down. And actually maybe it's a plug hole so I'll take it all the way through. Oops. So let's go back a bit. I just dragged that accidentally. Yep, okay, so that's still going through. And oh yeah, here to orbit, just in case um, it's not working for you, uh, it's Alt uh, with the middle mouse button instead of Shift in Revit. So Alt um, with uh, nothing selected orbits normally. If you select something, it'll orbit around that. So with the main object selected, the, the basin, I'm then going to go to uh, on the Create panel. Um, under uh, standard, um, or sorry, under geometry, which is the first button there, you've got uh, compound objects, and then throw boolean, and then start picking. Uh, and then you should just need to leave it on subtraction, and now I can choose this cylinder, and it's taken it away. Okay, so then I'm going to right click to finish selecting, it's really important, or it'll keep selecting things to subtract. And then, um, we're going to wireframe. We can see that that's pretty deep, maybe deeper than I'd want some porcelain to be. So I might want to bring that down, but still keep my plug hole. So, going to the modify panel, looking at throw boolean there, and then going to operands. If I go down the bottom of that panel, you'll see the original objects. So I'm going to choose the box, which was the original basin object. And now I can move it without changing the plug hole. So I'll go back to the original uh, vertices in the object and I can still select those. Move them all down. Or I can go back to the top of the stack there, or back to operands, and choose the cylinder, and move it separately as well. So I'm trying to really get you to look at the modify panel, see how you can navigate through the objects uh, after they've been created. And then you might realise that you need to make more of a um, subtraction from this, so if you wanted to go and model all the detail, uh, then you could maybe subtract another cylinder. So, well actually I can get the original one, I'm just going to go back to the stack there, there's my cylinder. I'm going to go to uh, copy above that, and then extract selected. So I've made a copy of the original cylinder, which I can now bring up. Oops, sorry, I've got to undo that got the boolean selected so I'm going to select my new cylinder, lift that up and then I'll just bring it down a little, change the radius to make it bigger and now just finally I'll select my original sink and go to start picking again and choose the cylinder to get an extra subtraction. So you can keep adding, unlike Revit, also actually Revit you can as well, you can keep doing extra voids, so it's similar to that. You can have as many objects as you like in the Boolean. And they're your main yes, sir, modeling methods. You could, you could definitely, but yeah, yeah, definitely, but try doing some of those things like just rounding the edges of an object in Revit and see how long it takes you. Um, but you can't. Oh yes, yeah, so yeah, yeah. Actually, and that's a good trick to get the basic form. Um, so, I mean, the primitives aren't too bad because you've got a lot of the main uh, different kinds of geometry there. 
Uh, and it's good just to play with those and see, see what you can do with them. Um, I was going to quickly show you Cylinder and things like that as well, because they're going to give you good options for things like bases. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, of course, you can get the same things with Revit. And then you can convert those Revit things into editable polys, just like they've been made in Max, and then work with the polygons and the vertices. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, because getting the detail, especially with things like basins and uh, you know all the things you'll need for these vanities, uh, is going to you know, be a lot of work in Revit, um, if it's even possible with some of the things you just can't model in Revit. So, uh, so again, just a really simple thing here. If you wanted to do a cylindrical sort of basin, you could, um, again, scale it. Uh, or you could try putting a modifier on. So have a look at the list of modifiers. And if you try s some of the ones that maybe make sense to you, like uh, skew, um, should be one that, uh, sorry, using those parameters there. You can use to change things in one direction, or taper is a similar one. So in that list there, you can see skews being added to a cylinder. This button will let you remove from the stack, and I'll add a taper instead. So I'm going out in all directions, and then again, I can convert all of this to an editable poly. Uh, and so I might just go to uh, edge then and see if I can get the loop. Doesn't want to do it. So I'll remove those things, work so rarely. Uh, but uh, anyhow, when they do work, they're great. So here I've got uh, crossing, so that's selecting all those. I'll just change the window to get the top. And I uh, know oh that's what we want. That was on window. So just making sure we get the top there. And uh, just showing you the same things again using. Uh, oh sorry, it was Polygon anyway, using um, Inset and um, Bevel and Extrude. You can, you could also do a Boolean, so I could have made something else to subtract from this and get the same result. Uh, so yeah, so lots of different ways of modelling, but, um, but this is direct polygonal modelling. So when people say they're polymodelers, this, this is what they're doing. They're pushing um, vertices around and changing the polygons directly. Uh, whereas solid modeling is um, using booleans and combining different, you know, solid objects. Yeah, it's union, subtract, and intersect are the main ones. You've got others. Um, it's named after George Bull, you know, the mathematician who came up with set algebra and all that stuff. Yeah. It is Boolean algebra. It's, to, it's all to do. It's all based on Boolean algebra. So if you've done programming, you know when you do if not and all that stuff. Yeah, yep. yep, that's where it comes from. So um, with the uh, well basin there, I might want that to be a bit smaller. So just to show you the last thing there, scale. Um, before I was using the base between x and y to scale in just the x and y plane. But you can scale uniformly in all directions using the tr the three triangles at the middle there, or non-uniformly in other directions. So, so you might be able to get different forms that you're after that way. Okay, and then maybe okay. So I know I said finally before this will be the final thing. Um, Again, it might be an idea to round those off. Try and think about when and how you do this because it, uh, as we saw before, can cause some problems. They have really improved this since 2015. It's been the number one complaint people have had about Max for years, the way this works. But, uh, well, oh, there, I've got to get the edges. The loop really should be working for me here. It's really. Yes, there we go. So, loop, you can see will usually go around an edge for you. And then with control again here, yes, and it's got the inside now. So when, it's uh, <laughs> when it works, it's great. And so then I can use chamfer and uh, get a nice rounded edge there, which would be an important thing for a basin. 
like this. So there we go. Maybe I could have had more segments in the original cylinder to begin with. That's my problem. Um, so, well, I can't help myself. I'll show you one last thing because this is an easy thing to try. Smooth. Watch out for turbo smooth and all the other smoothing modifiers. They're a bit more difficult, but just smooth in the modifier list there with auto smooth on uh, and edges turned off. Should do a pretty good job. Oh yes, of course. Oh yeah, yeah, lots of ways. So um, you've got all the Boolean methods. Uh, maybe just another quick way I can show you is with um, polys and uh, a lot of other objects, you get this attach option. So you can use that to attach other things and combine them. So yeah, just try attach. I'll just do it here and I'll be able to select other things. It's going to let me, you can see, select that. I'm not going to do it, but I could if I wanted to. So uh, yeah, it's a fantastic modelling program, even though you might have thought from the issues I had with it that it uh, has some problems. It does, but it also has some uh, great uh, advantages as a poly modeler. It's one of the best poly modelers going around. So uh, anyhow, I'll finish that video there and uh, give you some time to, to try those things.